Good evening. Welcome to Christ Church of Longboat Key on our most somber worship day of the year. This is Good Friday, and we are grateful that you are here, here in person, and here joining us online. Today we recall the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus, his death for our salvation. It is a simple and humble worship service that we have this evening. Our call to worship is a prayer. Then we will sing two songs. They are also prayers. And then we will begin the tenebrae and the shadows of the passion music. The tenebrae service and shadows of the passion are described on the, the back page of your insert, a little more information about them. But generally, the tenebrae service is a service of increasing darkness. It's a little like the opposite of Christmas Eve where we have increasing light to celebrate the arrival of the everlasting light. Tonight, we observe the effort of the dark forces of darkness to overcome that light. And we pay careful attention to, the, to that battle and so that we will come down to darkness. The Shadows of the Passion is both spoken and musical. It's a narrative of the passion that Robert and I will read and then musical reflection by our trio that, again, will draw us into prayer. Tonight may seem like the end. That's what the forces of darkness wanted it to be. But we know that's not so. And so I want to be sure that you are also aware that we will be worshiping again on the third day on Easter Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And so I hope you will plan to be joining us then. So let us now draw our hearts and minds together to worship the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Let's remain seated for our first song. And now let us stand to sing, Were You There?
please be seated. <clears throat> the prophecy. On the road with the 12 disciples, Jesus began to tell them what was going to happen to him, saying, Behold, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him, and they will spit upon him, and they will scourge him, and they will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. The Betrayal. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They all were planning to arrest and destroy Jesus quietly so as to avoid a popular revolt among the Jews. At the time, Jesus was lodging at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. While he was there, a woman approached and anointed him from an alabaster jar of pure nard. When his disciples saw the act, they were outraged. Why this waste, they demanded. Such costly ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Jesus responded, Why do you bother the woman? The poor are always with you. Indeed, I tell you that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then one of the twelve, named Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you for the governor? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas 30 pieces of silver. From that hour, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city, and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar, who brought them to a large upper room. When the evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I, Jesus replied. The betrayer is one of you dipping his hand in the dish with me. The son of man is fulfilling scripture. But woe to that man through whom the son of man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night.
strings of silver I will take and lead them to my Lord They will put aside their fears And they will listen to his words Thirty coins of silver I can see that they will understand What I do, I do for him In true belief, a better way The prediction. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples as he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples as he said, this is my blood of the covenant which is being shed for many. I tell you in truth that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Then having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, you will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, though all desert, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I tell you truly that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still, Peter maintained, even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples. Tells me like the others, I will slip away. He says, I'll scatter in the night. But I know, like no other, by his side I'll stay. Prepare to save him. not deny him. I will stand at the gates of hell, my fortune cast to fate, and still I'll not deny him. But does he see in my eyes a secret of doubtfulness? Hiding so deep in my heart, hiding so deep in my heart. The Garden. Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little further alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer. And again, he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. A third time, Jesus withdrew to pray. And a third time, he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, sleep on and finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man 
to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer. drink from this cup thou prepared for me. Then he returned to them and found them sleeping. Could you not have stayed awake here for me? My friends to be with me the hours at hand my death to see stay close to me The prisoner. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, the man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, Greetings, Master. Then he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately, the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Jesus said to him, Sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and he will respond at once with more than 12 legions of angels? Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me as against a rebel with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all of his disciples forsook him and fled.
Judas, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? <clears throat> I know they must come after me. The trial. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be the king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified. We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands, and within three days build another not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges, demanded the high priest? Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingship in terms of royal titles, anointed and son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of the blessed, he probed? Jesus answered, I am. And you shall see the son of man seated on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest turned and said, what need have we of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were striking him as they taunted him and said, O oh, anointed one, prophesy who it is who is striking you. in him in eloquence do I see it in his eyes does he not know the power we hold over as we listen to the witnesses does he not know we are wise still there exists within my heart disquieting feelings I sense in this man a spirit which comes not from this world should I be silent should I be strong could we be wrong himself anointed one this can only be a lie so shall we judge we sit amid his treason we have need for no more witnesses we have sentenced him to die
the denial. Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, you also were with this Jesus the Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you are talking about, he replied, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The slave girl followed Peter out and again said to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, surely you are one of them for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath, I do not know this person of whom you are speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately, Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The Repentance. When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed, and he repented. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood, What is that to us, they responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the chief priest said, it is unlawful to put this money into the treasury, for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, that field is known to this day as the field of blood. What is there to do now that they've taken him away? I know to die. Whatever I can do, I cannot undo this. How could things go wrong? I thought they understood. I love this man so much. How I have betrayed him Such will be my shame I know my heart must die I cannot go
the judgment. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself anointed king. The governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you say so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Therefore, Pilate again spoke to Jesus, have you no answer to give? Look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. What have we here, a prophet of tomorrow? Why do they fear this one so born with sorrow? I see a man standing before me, nothing more. What has he done? He seems to have done little. He claims he's the one. He talks to me in riddles. What can I do but give him to them? Thus they implore. His fate is up to them. His blood is not on my hands. And it doesn't really matter. For no one will remember. What have we here, a prophet of tomorrow? Why do they fear this one so born with sorrow? I see a man standing before me, nothing more. Do you not know your power comes from God? What has he done? He yes, seems to have done little. He claims he's the one, he I talks to no me in riddles. What can I do but give him to them? Thus they implore. Who call me as their king? His fate is up to them. His blood is not on my hands. And it doesn't really matter. One will remember. I am with you always. The condemnation. At that festival, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, the chief priests arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrator shouted, Barabbas! Pilate responded, What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? The crowd shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate spoke again, Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Jesus Barabbas. But Jesus, the anointed one, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion.
We have no king but Caesar, we have no king but Caesar, we have no king, we have no king, we have no king but Caesar, we have no king but Caesar, we have no king but Caesar, we have no king, we have no king, we have no king but Caesar. We see nothing save trouble from this man. Take him, whip him, crucify him. We see nothing save trouble from this man. Take him, whip him, crucify him. We have him. no king but Caesar. We see we nothing have no save trouble Caesar. from this we man. Have no king, we Take have no king, him, we have no king but Caesar. We have him. no king but Caesar. We see we nothing have no save trouble Caesar. from this we man. We have no king, we Take have no king, we have no king but Caesar. The Death. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. They assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, they took away the purple, returned his own clothes, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road, they met an African of Cyrene named Simon, coming in from the countryside. They compelled him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for them. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the king of the Jews. Also, there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in derision and saying, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the anointed one, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Even the two with him reviled him. Now from midday, there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani? Words that mean, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, look, he's calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it on his lips. Others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. 
Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. fight for you. A few remained, but where was I? Standing silent in my selfishness. Have mercy, Lord, my King, to die. The tomb. And when the evening had come, since it was the day of the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, wondering whether Jesus was already dead, summoned the centurion, from whom he learned that indeed this was so. So he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph took Jesus down, wrapped him in a linen shroud, 
and laid him in a tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. The Lamb from Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep are gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that, it, that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. How could we know But look what we knew It wasn't our will But look we crucified hope. We crucified light. We crucified God. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrows and acquainted. Sorrows, a man of sorrows. 
Go in peace, and let this be our prayer. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Amen. Go in peace. Go in silence. Keep watch tomorrow and return for the wonder of the third day. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.